Let's start with some prayer here. Heavenly Father, we come right now and we, we pray for your, your mighty anointing on the proclamation of the message. This has been a very busy week, a very long week, and an eventful week. Father, we ask for you to illuminate us as I just share for a few minutes what you have to share with me. In Jesus' name, Amen. As I speak today, this has been an eventful week. Uh, just a few days ago, a massive EF4 tornado hit Embraer, which is about 15 miles from here. Uh, a lot of devastation. Uh, a lot of plans are being made. And I was just thinking about not just the events in Henryville, but the Lord has been putting the burden on my heart, events in the church world. And sometimes I'm, I'm like King David, I, I get frustrated, and I'm just going to briefly read Psalm 73 and just give a, a kind of a heart-to-heart -heart commentary here. A little bit different type of message from what I am usually present, and I'll go ahead and read it here. It says, Truly, God is good to Israel. To such that are pure in heart, but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there were no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm, for they are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride serves as their necklace, violence covers them like a garment, their eyes bulge with abundance, they have more than their heart could wish, they scoff and speak wickedly. They speak loftily, they set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who are always at ease, they increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain. I have washed my hands in innocence, for all day long I have played and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Folks, when you're living the godly life, when you're striving to live the godly life, and you're seeing all around wickedness, lunacy just flourish, and sometimes you're tempted to think, what's the point? But you see, we the problem is that when we're going through things, we see just through our perspective a lot of times, but when we go into the sanctuary of God, when we come into the presence of God, the Lord shares His perspective with us, and His perspective is the truth. And when we come into His presence, and, and He shares His Spirit with us, reveals to us, and we, we see His presence, we can understand truly what is going on. We can get a grasp of the big picture. And it says, uh, again, until I went to the sanctuary of God, in verse 17, then I understood their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation. As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakes. So, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus, my heart was grieved. And I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And, and there is none upon earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. There are several thoughts in, in that chapter there. One is that God sets the wicked in slippery places. It's a part of the human nature. It's a part of the American way. When we see injustice... When we see things, problems, take matters in your own hands and think, what do I have to do to put a stop to this? And there's nothing wrong with pursuing justice. We should always pursue justice. We should always 
use the gifts that God has for us for the benefit of others, for, for justice, for righteousness, to show the love of God, to show the grace of God. But ultimately, the Christian life is not about what we do. It is about what Christ did and what Christ is doing. It is about the fact that Christ shed His blood on the cross. That we can be free from our sins. And our, the confession gives us victory is that the blood of Jesus takes away our sin. We don't become righteous by saying, I'm going to be righteous. We become righteous by saying, the blood of Jesus makes me righteous. The blood of Jesus makes me holy. And it's not about what we do in our own fleshly power. It's, a, it's about what Christ did. It's also about what Christ is now doing through the Holy Spirit. And in Psalms... Uh, not Psalms, but Isaiah 40, where we give the commission of John the Baptist as the voice crying in the wilderness. John just quotes that one verse, but there's much more in chapter 40, and I preached in the previous mentions. It talks about how the Holy Spirit is as wind, and as the wind blows on the grass, the grass withers, it fades away, but the, the man or woman who does the will of God lasts forever. Sometimes the best thing that we can do is endure. Seek God's hedge of protection. When that storm came, what did I do? I prayed for God's hedge of protection. He would protect my loved ones, my household, my stuff. And I said this as the wall clouds were coming in. Not knowing whether the, the, there was going to be an F4 or an F5 come straight towards my house or not. I didn't know God knew. It turns out as history unfolded, Henryville took a direct hit. Marysville took a direct hit. Uh, a small town in Jefferson County, Indiana called Chelsea, which is a few miles out of Madison, took a direct hit. And that hit was several deaths. Milton, Kentucky took a hit. There were other places in Kentucky that were hit by other tornadoes. There was a lot of suffering over this past week. But I trusted in the Lord. And this time the Lord is, was gracious to me and I continue to trust that He'll be gracious. Never taking for granted anything. It is God's goodness that keeps us safe. And it is God's goodness that calls on us to have a compassion of you for those who got hit. But while we have that compassion of you, you see, we're the ambassadors of God. And, and it's a juggling act. On one side, we have to stand for God's righteousness. We have to speak that the judgment of God is alive and well. We are what Jesus called the beginning of sorrows. And part of the beginning of sorrows, Jesus said there would be earthquakes in various places. There would be storms in various places. Pestilence, diseases, all sorts of things. That they would increase in frequency. They would increase in intensity. The judgment of God is alive and well because God has a beat with the planet Earth. The entire planet is becoming increasingly an insane asylum. It is becoming more and more in rebellion against Him. Uh, we're pushing things that just a few years ago were unthinkable like gay marriage. That was not even on the radar screen, boys, when I was your age. That thought didn't exist in anyone's mind. But now it's this big debate going on. Uh, we're not only killing millions of unborn children, but we're, we now have an administration bent on forcing people of conscience to pay for it against their own conscience. There's all kinds of lunacy going on. You just look in Hollywood and I could spend hours talking about the various sins, the various abominations that have taken hold in society. But our society is by and large said to God, we don't need you. They've said to the Lord, we reject you. We, re we don't accept you as the Lord of the earth. We don't care what God said. That's what people are saying in various ways. We're even seeing it in the church. Too many preachers are not willing to preach anything that's hard. And if they do, they catch a lot of flack from elders, from deacons, from others in the church who say, we don't, want, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear smooth things. We want to hear that Jesus loves us. We don't want to hear this judgment. But you see, folks, the love of God and the judgment of God go hand in hand. When Jesus died on the cross, it was not only God sharing His love, it was God executing judgment. When Jesus died on the cross, when He spilled His blood, God was executing judgment on our sins on Him. Jesus took the punishment for our sins. 
So the cross was an act both of love and of judgment. And that is the message that we have. That is the message that we embrace as Christians. That is what we, when we talk to the world, when we plead with those. We plead, one, the judgment of God is real. If you continue near your rebellion, you're eventually going to be punished. Possibly now, things are happening. And it's, it's, and it's not that anyone necessarily is being targeted, but because this world has rejected God, things, things are unfolding. But also, Christ died. He died to save your soul. He died to be your deliverer. He can not only deliver you from sins, but I'm here to tell you that the protection of God, the hedge of protection that's talked about in Job, the first chapter, is for real. I have personally experienced the benefit of that. And if it wasn't for that offer, if it wasn't for that ministry of the Lord, I would be dead today. I would not be speaking to you today. It's possible that I would have died before I even fathered children. And wouldn't even have my sons here with, with me today to hear the message that I'm speaking. Uh, my lovely wife Anne would, would never have met me. Because I would have been killed by something that came about. But because the hedge of protection was upon me, because God became my shield, out of His grace, not because I deserved it, but out of His grace, He made Himself available as my shield, as my hedge of protection. I am here to speak. I am here to testify. And so I urge all who hear this message over the internet or wherever it may go, now is the acceptable time to seek the Lord. To seek Him as your deliverer. And if there is sin in your life, and ask God, is there any wicked way in me? Do you have a beef with me? Is there, is there an issue in my life that you have a problem with? We all need to ask that. And if there is, then now is the acceptable time to repent. To come to Him, to embrace Him. And we have this promise in the Scripture. The Lord will never turn away anyone who has a contrite heart who is willing to come to Him. The Lord will not turn away those who come to Him. He is gracious to protect. He is gracious to deliver. And now is the acceptable time. And that's basically all I have for today. Um, I pray that the, the Lord finds you well and blessed. And for those of us who are blessed, and especially those who are living in the Louisville metropolitan area who are near, do whatever you can to help the victims. Be the compassionate hand of God. There are people in need. Some of those people in need are relatives of mine that are, are living in that area. Uh, that's all I have to say in Jesus' name.